Good morning. It's another wonderful day in Gothenburg. So yesterday I... What did I do? I went to see Anivar for my last job interview. And I was really happy because it turns out that I've, I've, I had lunch with two of their developers. And in essence, it turns out like the... the the VD or whatever the title is. I was sitting down talking to him. It's this guy, I said, he's two years younger than me and in three years he, he's, he's made a company worth 18 million crowns, which is, this, in, me, in my book, that's, that's pretty fucking impressive. Uh, apparently, as soon as I left during that lunch meeting, he got a text from my, well, potential colleagues and which just read, this guy, we need him which is pretty cool. They really liked me and I liked them. So they basically said that they had a project and they showed me what they wanted me to work on and said like, if I'm interested, like they want me to work for them. However, I told them that, I've, you know, when it, as far as consultancies goes, this there, like a position at that company is something that I would be very interested in. Interested in. But, I want to see first and foremost how things turn out with Klarna and today I am going to a company who actually does education programs here in Gothenburg and it might actually be the same it's the same education that I had and I thought it would be I want to see what it's about it would be pretty cool to take a year or two or whatever it is a semester and teach like front end development I think that would be pretty cool. So, yeah, that's going on. What's going on? Uh, I also did the like the the test for this big business in the UK, and it's surprise, surprise. It's it was basically an online platform with a bunch of computer science questions. And I really only, I managed to finish and comp I can completed the first of five tasks. And then I did a partial completion on one of the others. And the others were like, I, I knew from the start that, you know, I haven't done any of this stuff for years. I mean, like, it was a lot of mathematics and a lot of like working through, uh, Let's just say that I'm pretty confident that if I had had a refresher of these algorithms, then I would solve this problem. Because it's not really, a, to me, it wasn't much. It, I mean, he said on the test, oh, this is a front end developer test. And I was like, there's not a single thing that's front endy about this. I can take the whole test in, in, in another, like, in basically any language. And um, I, I told the recruiter, she was really disappointed. I, which is to be expected because, you know, <laughs> I'm presuming that, I mean, she's not doing this out of the kindness of her heart and the client is massive. And considering that my claim for a salary is the highest that they are offering, means that if they sell me to these clients and considering that my social skills are very high, uh, she's probably thinking, uh, my guess is that, you know, she's probably thinking that she can, you know, make make this happen, but not so likely now when I didn't make, in her terms, a real effort to to complete the test. And all I did, I really told her was that it's not that I didn't make a, a real effort. I read through all the content. I looked at it. And one of the questions didn't work for me, but you know, I I made a real effort. But I realized that I can sit here for the rest of the time that's left and try to do this and waste my time because I'm not going to get it right because I know I don't remember the mathematics and the like the algorithm to solve this problem some of it I did solve but not this and considering that this this job is not my first choice and considering that I don't really see the relevance in computer science questions when it comes to determining whether or not somebody is applicable for a position, especially not as a front-end developer. I mean, 
if I was applying for a data scientist job, then yeah, I would be a little bit, a little bit, uh, as a company, I would be a little bit hesitant to hire somebody who can't do like, in, like junior level computer science uh, stuff. But yeah, I, I told her I don't have an excuse. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like I haven't done computer science in years, so I don't remember all of the, of these algorithms or how to like, how to effectively write code that solves these problems because most of the time that's not what I do and I would argue that very few programmers do this stuff because there is quite literally people who are working as computer scientists and these are the people you want to go to if you want to solve this problem or you will do what they should let me do which is I mean I, I, I didn't want to cheat so instead of googling oh like one of the problems were the zombie problem and then you have the walking robot over the grid to detect when it is in an infinite loop. I mean these are cookie cutter basic computer science questions and it will take me quite literally a googly a google and five or maybe ten minutes of reading to refresh my understanding of the algorithm involved to solving this problem to solve their question but since I'm not allowed to do that and I don't want to be a cheater, I didn't do it. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video where I, I realized that I don't care anymore. I don't care about what I feel is a fairly unre unrelevant test. Because sure, you can argue that, oh no, it tests your ability to solve problems. And then I go, well, yes, it does test your ability to solve problems if you're a computer scientist, because that's the problem that you're trying to solve. And it's the same principle I apply to code tests where you like, you quite literally try to write, like you, you write the worst code that you can possibly make and you try to get the candidate to understand what's going on. Once again, if that's the way that you think that you can measure a person's ability to solve problems or a skill set and so forth, that's great. If, if, if I don't think that I don't I, I'm pretty sure I don't want to work for a company like that because it, ter it tells me that you're you're putting a lot of thought and effort into things that a person is going to be able to solve in a, like in a it, it's not a how do I put it, it in in essence if as I said if I wanted to solve this problem I would look for somebody to tell me like, how, what the mathematics behind it is or what the, what the thought behind the algorithm is and I would solve that problem, which most people would do. They would Google it or whatever, but you know, you're in a test sim simulated, simulated situation. So what they're actually testing is, do you have this knowledge fresh in your head? Do you have the ability to do that immediately? And that's usually not the case. Very, like, I don't know anyone in my industry who doesn't just who doesn't Google things at least a few times a day. No programmer has the entire, I mean, I don't remember all of the stuff that JavaScript can do. Sometimes I forget what the function name is. I have to Google the function name or whatever it is. And what I argue is that if you want to try and see if a person, you know, make the test about what they actually are supposed to do and make it relevant to their job description so that you know that they can do the job. And she was kind of like, oh, you know, a, this company is really big and they, like, they have a lot of that stuff. And I mean, if you can't do it, you like that, that that's, that's not good. And I said, well, I, I don't have an excuse. I'm sorry. I don't remember all this stuff. And if uh, and I actually said I don't think that we should progress this any further because if this is what they're looking for then I'm not a good fit for this role and I then go on and say but I want you to know something I work at Ticketmaster today and I got that job by doing a code test for Ticketmaster and Ticketmaster is pretty much like Lime Nation, Ticketmaster they're on par with the size I think they're probably even bigger than this company and I started out doing a junior position and today I'm from virtually a senior developer. So it, like, what does that say? Well, it tells you that I couldn't solve these computer science questions, but I can, I'm good enough at my, my job to be able to 
progress very quickly in a big organization and pass their tests and I'm passing at a lot of, like I've, I'm hearing Gothamer for other companies that are of course much smaller, I'm passing their tests and I'm producing value. A lot of the code, like, uh, like much of the code that's on the Ticketmaster platform in production today, that's my code. So what does that tell you? Well, testing is a, is a difficult topic. So to any one of you guys out there who are, you know, if you're taking a lot of code, if you, if, you, if you get slapped with computer science questions and so forth, you know, you have two options. Either you are one of those talented people who really love computer science and you remember all these algorithms and it's, that's great for you if, if, if you can do that, that's going to help you out getting a lot of jobs. But personally, I would, I, I would, I wouldn't really bother with it because if, as, as I said, imagine it, it's like, it's like applying for a job as, as I don't know, as a, as a taxi driver and you get a test for a NASCAR driver. It, because that's in essence what it is. It is vaguely, the test is vaguely relevant to your daily work, but what does it tell you about the company? If they're testing of a applicant for a job, then like their test is is organized is aimed towards testing something that isn't really relevant to their job. That should tell you something about their process. That's anyway how I feel about it.